What's up, Storm Watchers? I just got back from looking at uh, episode episode nine and ten of Ruby, and of course, like always, after seeing you know the episodes weekly, I give these really quickie uh, reviews on them and discussion and whatnot, and what I felt about it and what to expect, and predictions and whatnot. Um. So more so, when episode nine literally opened up, it more so got in a more nitty gritty with uh, with it got more in the nitty gritty with Emerald and and uh, Mercury. They're really forgettable characters. I'm sorry if I'm you know kind of you know not saying them like that nonchalant. Uh, and yeah, we get more let more so the nitty gritty about the characters. We get more about their storyline and their concepts and their situations and their dilemmas and whatnot. And you know the reason for why they're fighting. Uh, Emerald pretty much looked up to Cinder as an as a surrogate older sister or more so a mother figure or a caretaker or whatnot. And she pretty much just like in a in a in a in a in a fit of discouragement because she's gone and. You know, she feels alone and well, not gone as in day gone, of course, but more so like, you know, she's defeated or, you, you know, she's been kicked out or she's on her path of redemption up to Salem or to herself, which again was a later theory I said, in, you know, in, her, in my earlier uh, videos on uh, Cinder and whatnot. And then, of course, we get more about Mercury and, you know, Mercury... Pretty much the only real reason why he joined Salem in the first place is so he can pretty much fight opponents, strong opponents, rather weak or strong than him. Uh, I kind of was really not expecting much on Mercury's part, the reason why he's working for Salem and whatnot. So, you know, that it was all water under the bridge when I, when we more or less, when I heard about it. I heard about the reason why he's, you know, on, the, on Salem's uh, side. So pretty much can fight strong opponents and, you know, he can stand out on being, you know, the cream of the crop amongst Salem and their little new world that she's planning. Uh, Salem's plan is it's not exactly concrete. So, you know, I guess I'll just go with, with the notion the writers were going when he said that. Uh, and then print and then. Throughout their little tussle, for some reason, you know, Tyrion, this Tyrion pops in and attacks Mercury with literally just one attack. I mean, literally, we saw him like literally just sparring in the back of with Taekwondo and whatnot. We saw him literally just doing all that just for him to get pumped, get bitched out with one attack from Tyrion. Uh,. And more or less, I guess, uh, more or less, Taryn said, you know, we're going to have to, from this part on, we're going to have to split up and whatnot, because uh, Salem is seemingly going to do a surprise attack on Atlas. So I guess we, uh, we're we actually going to see Salem fight, or, you know, we're actually going to see her, you know, actually officially take the war to them, or to, to the heroes or whatnot, to the guardians, to the huntress men and huntresses and whatnot so I, I guess you know that's going to be something that's going to be prepped up you know in this following season or even the next one uh just like neo and and and, and cinder's truce which was hinted and showed throughout this throughout this season yet <laughs> it kind of seems like we're never going to see it because the whole fact i think the whole fact that neo being in thrown into the season was pure fan service. Not a bad thing, but I gotta call the spade a spade. She was simply just throwing this episode for fan service, and I guess you know everyone got the rocks off seeing you know those two uh, in the truce and whatnot. So yeah, I guess we're gonna have to see their truce evolve more, rather into whatever episodes is gonna be left in this season or the next or whatnot. So. That's all speculations, I guess, on their little build up that this season seems to like shoving out, but never really fulfill. Just like, um, like, like, honestly, I thought uh, uh, Miller Choi, Little Miss M, 
if I'm saying it right, Mellet Chot, Mellet Choi, or M Little Miss M, or, you know, the infamous one, Fat Purple Bitch, Fat Purple Spider Bitch. Uh, she's pretty much going to be built up, or from what I've seen, built up to be this main antagonist, but instead it's kind of lying. So, I, I don't know. And I'll get to that later, of course, in the episode 10 section of this video. Uh, so yeah, from what, from what Tyrion said when he attacked, when he, uh, when he attacked, uh, Mercury, uh, it kind of seems like he's, it kind of seems like Salem is finally going to, uh, you know, bring out the big guns, you know, finally, you know, uh, kick off their next plan to Atlas. I always get them mixed up and whatnot. So yeah, I guess that's what that's, that's the whole build up for that particular scene. So I guess keep your fingers crossed that it might happen in the next episodes or the next season or whatever. And Tyrion also has a cybernetic uh, cybernetic dick now. He, he has a new cybernetic dick that uh, has a retractable smaller dick. So I guess we can, you know, finally see what it's going to be up to, you know, from the sex shop. And, you know, him, I mean, instead of, you know, I'm simply just getting, you know, uh, a grim tail, just like how Cinder got a grim arm. He gets a cybernetic tail from Watts, because, you know, they have to keep that character relevant somehow, I guess. They have to, you know, give him a purpose. Because, you know, that character, just like so many others, is just so non-existent in this series. Their roles, their purpose is just almost non-existent. So I guess, you know... They had to throw in Watts, give him a new tail. I mean, I know it was built up, but I, I guess they have, you know, they have to keep Watts somewhat relevant in this series. So I guess they had to throw in him, giving Tyrion a new tail. And then, of course, after that little segment cuts off, we get to uh, Team Ruby, more or less looking for an Oscar who ran away all of a sudden. And more or less, we cut off to a part with John Arc, with John. And I guess wherever he's sulking or wherever he's also looking for Oscar despite, you know, scolding him and whatnot. So I guess automatically like a fucking switch. He just, he just wants to find Oscar now because he feels guilty for it, I guess. So you could take that. I don't know how to take that. Whatever. And he stumbles upon, uh, uh, Pyrrhus, a, a statue of Pyrrha in, uh, in Arcus, and, you know, he gets his tears out, gets his boo-hoos out here and there, and then some woman who strangely looks a lot like May from Overwatch, but with red hair and a different attire and, and, and not as fat, comes by to give her respects and her condolences and pretty much rest her flowers to her daughter's statue, and, well, I just said it. Oh yeah, it's revealed that it's her mom. But yeah, she more or less lays it down. So I guess Pierre is a martyr in the root in remnant, I guess, in the world in the Ruby world, I guess. Or in Reverend that, part that particular village or whatever, or Atlas or whatever she came from. I I mean Pierre is not a bad character, but I can really care less about the character, to be honest. She's she's gone. Fuck it. She's fucking gone. Can't stretch that character more out, but to be just uh, an emotional break for John and, you know, Team Ruby, who only just spec to her and barely actually knew the girl. So I guess that's that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the only role that Pure serves now, just pretty much being the emotional break for John and whatnot. And I, I know this is, for, and on, on terms of animation, uh, in this episode, I, I know this probably was current in, in, in earlier episodes or, or older episodes, but I kind of found it a bit off how how everyone's hair, you know, how their hair pretty much trickles down their eyebrow. I kind of found it funny how it's still transparent, despite, you know, their hair cloaking their eyebrows. It's this really anime-ish, you know, concept. And in a lot of animes, they do that too. The hair always sleeks down their eyebrow. Yeah, their eyebrow is pretty, it's, it's, you know, it's, 
as clear as day. So I, I kind of, I know it could be cited from like older episodes, but I just found it in this particular episode. Now that I've, you know, actually looked at it, you know, with, you know, observantly, like I went back and checked and saw the episode twice and whatnot. I looked at it as, I looked at it as observantly as possible. I know I'm probably overdoing it with the eyes going on, but yeah, you know, y'all got, y'all feel me. Y'all actually got to get me what I'm saying is, I, I just felt in that part, I just felt like it was that, and up in that particular shots with her hair trickling down her eyebrows, yet you can still see it. I kind of found it a little off, kind of just like how Superman's uh, lip was CGI'd because he had a must. Because uh, I forgot the original actor's name, uh, uh, Henry Cavill. Yeah, Henry Cavill had a mustache and he couldn't shave it for the next movie. And you know, you can at first I didn't notice it was. A CGI mouth, but now that I've revisited Justice League and looking back at it, and you can tell it's just his mouth is just CGI. So yeah, <laughs> I kind of felt like it was more or less the whole Superman mouth CGI uh, thing going on all over again with <laughs> with the eyebrow and hair sequence. I, I know it was probably really apparent in older episodes, but you know now that I'm actually seeing it, you know, thoroughly, I just I found it in these particular spots just really off or I just feel like uh, the art directors in this particular season is just really pushing it I guess to be really anime like which they don't have to be they can just be Ruby I mean Ruby is pseudo anime let's face it but it's not a bad thing but you know it is what it is Ruby is a pseudo anime it is what it is but I kind of feel like when they go to lengths like that to even replicate the artistry and the animation of an anime to pretty much every single detail, I kind of felt like they're really just overexerting it in this. Like, yes, we know, we know. This is an American anime, it's pseudo anime, but get it. But you don't have to fucking sniff off an anime, anime's art style and animation like Coke lines on a bitch's ass. So we get it, we, we, we get it. Uh, uh, team uh, Rooster Teeth and Miles and Carrie, we get it, we get it. You want to be like anime. You want this to be as anime as possible, but don't overexert it. We get it. <laughs> I mean, it's. I'm, I know it's probably a big fuss, but I just felt like it was kind of odd. And, you know, from there, I had to, you know, I made a hypothesis and it led me up to, you know, thinking that and whatnot. And, you know, after just mindless hours of sulking for... Pure, we we finally uh, transitioned to them finding uh, Ospin pretty much being in a uh, uh, pretty much being in uh, John's how uh, John's sister's house the whole time and whatnot, and he has a new suit on and he kind of looks like <laughs> he kind of looks like a human sized Santa elf. I mean, <laughs> when I look when I looked at Oscar, that's we that's the first thing. He, that, that just clicked in my head. He looks like a, a human-sized elf from from Santa, one of Santa's elves, but humanized. That's what he kind of looked like to me. Uh, I'm not hating on his design. I don't, I, don't, I don't even hate it. I'm just saying that's that was the first idea I got when I first saw it. And pretty much, you know, they got really cartoony with them jumping on them and, you know, you know, uh, uh, bringing them back and, you know, oh, Oscar, we missed you, missed you, you ran away, whatnot, you know, let's suck your dick, oh, and whatnot, oh, let's try to make this scene as emotional as possible, although we literally just ran away and we just found you in seconds, so I guess it was no re real big deal to begin with, and then John comes up and more or less puckers him up and whatnot, and, you know, pats him up and says, I'm sorry for breaking out on you because I'm because uh, personally I have no grievance with you but rather the man that's that's embodying you so pretty much me breaking out my, my frustrations on you is like really fucking petty so I don't even know what, what was that whole scene about if I'm just gonna just you know uh, pet you up again later on so yeah that was whatever I guess and whatnot and then pretty much 
the episode ends pretty pretty much. They get together, they, they get their 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 the words out, the worries out, they they he's redeemed, they, he forgives him. I guess they finally saw the fucking writing on the wall because you know, pretty much everyone in Ruby is a fucking idiot sometimes. You know, just it's just dumb for the sake of the plots. Not not I didn't mean to steal from Vex viewed, but yeah. Sometimes Ruby has that syndrome where most characters are just dumb for the sake of the plots. And it kind of get becomes very apparent over time where it just becomes, you know, irritable, I guess. Uh, I guess that would be the right word for it. And uh, anyway, that's pretty much about it. And then pretty much the next episode starts with uh, Weiss pretty much uh, sneaking into the sneaking to the military and you know kind of lying you know sucks her dick because she's part of the Shnee family and you know she uh, boards her on the plane and but the whole time it was a plan so Weiss pretty much puts out the the two dumb guards which actually in this episode were pretty were actually pretty funny and whatnot uh actually they were pretty funny for uh, as far as you know they're them being just hella eccentric for for the sake of it. They were actually pretty funny in this episode. <laughs> um, I kind of found it funny. I kind of, well, <laughs> I may be going back, but I kind of found it funny in this episode how pretty much John's sister more or less encouraged uh, her, her, her son, her, you know, her adopted African son to cry to more or less get the, the, the soldiers attention so they can sneak him aboard the plane because Weiss was carrying a suitcase with Cali Vera she was in it and <laughs> that's pretty much it was a it was a delusion more so a deception to get her on the plane and I, <laughs> I made a joke about the baby I always say it to myself I bet that baby semblance is super crying or something because literally no joke when the baby cried i guess you know they were trying to say how loud he was it literally was this pulse this blue sound wave that pretty much got everyone's attention in the fucking military base and i made a, a joke here and there saying that his semblance the baby semblance is probably crying just like how in contrast what triggers hmm. What triggers, what triggers John was uh, more or less seeing people in peril. Just like what triggers uh, Ruby Silver Eyes is happy thoughts or wanting to protect someone else, wanting to come out of her way for someone else. I just, I just, it was a little sad joke. You can take it as a grain of salt. And really, if you would took it out this little quickie, it wouldn't even matter. But I just, I had to just get that out right quick. It was just on my mind for a bit. <laughs> what not. And, okay, more or less, they hijacked the plane. They kicked the two idiots out, uh, Kali Vera and, and, and Weiss. And Kali Vera more or less goes to this kind of really cringy comedic moment where uh, she, she eats peanuts while a... Uh, 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 Cunneline was hearing her like eat this or hear this or I don't give a or whatever I, I can't really uh, care to remember because it really wasn't all that funny uh, the, 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 the comedy in this the comedy in this episode in, in general it was just so it was it was literally here and there it was all water on the bridge it came and it went that's pretty much what the comedy was in this episode and you know I can care less about Cunneline because you know instead of just being this stereotypical strict general she just turns out to be just a comedic foil for uh, 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 Cali Vera and Team Ruby so I can care half half a shit about uh, Cunneline's little uh, uh, comedic foil she served in this episode um uh, and it even became even more absurd where she was literally willing to shoot down the jet they were in in this giant mecha suit 
And I just felt like it was just really just overdoing the comedy to the point where it wasn't even funny anymore. It was just, it was just really juvenile, I guess. It was just whatever. <laughs> For the sake of it, I guess it was whatever. It was, it was just a really whatever scene. It wasn't all that funny. It came, it went, and that's pretty much all it was to it. And pretty much we cut to the next scene where it was pretty much the only real suspenseful scene in this series. You know, the only one I actually, actually takes seriously instead of Cut Online, who's just a comedic foil, which is nothing wrong with that, but it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing with, with Cut Online as a character I can just generally take serious because she's just a dumb comedic foil from Maria. So she's a fucking whatever character. She's unfunny. She's you could take her out the whole story and wouldn't even matter. You could you could take out the story it would be less funny, or or be more funny or whatever. I just really want to stop talking about the character. She did her part in this episode and it came and it went and that's really all to it. Anyway, like I was saying, we cut to a, a more suspenseful moment with Blake and Adam fighting on top of a uh, on top of a satellite bridge. Which, again, is another really hand-fisted and just pointless fan service uh, moment. A really pointless fan service moment in this episode. Again, like I said, with Neo, there's nothing wrong with fan service. But, um, uh, uh, yeah, Neo. I almost got confused with Neon. Anyway, uh, yeah. There's nothing wrong with fan service. And I actually do like uh, uh, Neo in small doses, I guess. She's a really Boba Fett-esque character, so I, she's, you know, whatever. She's fine, she just, she is a bit overrated, just like Boba Fett. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, I would, I wouldn't lie to myself. I, I wouldn't. Uh, but yeah, Adam, the whole presence in this episode was yeah, purely fan service. Let's, let's, Fucking not even sugarcoated. It was what it was. And yeah, more or less, I kind of like their, I kind of like their little squabble with, uh, that Blake and, 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 and uh, Ray Grimjow had. And apparently Ray Grimjow can shoot Ray Getsuga. So I guess that's an uh, added bonus to his already kind of OP moon slice. Not a bad thing, but yeah, he shoots Ray Getsuga. I guess that was the only cool thing about Adam, because, you know, I don't give a shit about Adam. I, he's not my favorite character. I can really care less about Adam. He's, like, just a really, just a really overachieving and kind of really obnoxious-ass character. Just like Grimjow, he's a, it's just pretty much what he is to me. He's just a whatever character uh, <laughs> and whatnot. And there was literally one part this is literally one part of fight that people literally just won't fucking shut up about this on YouTube. Where where Blake literally trips Adam and they both fall. Which I kind of thought was funny because Blake is supposed to be this skilled huntress, right? She's pretty much like literally the most capable uh, member in the team for real, for real. And, and she, she tripped, she tripped up Ray Grimjow. And herself, although despite being the most skilled, I just found it just really fucking just, just really just for the sake of this, the whole showdown that we get when they fall to the ground, just, it was just a setup to that, but it was just whatever. I'm like, I mean, she's a skilled huntress, right? But she ended up, she ended up, she just basically ended up tripping up herself. I mean, I like Blake. She's my favorite character, but I just, but she's just kind of, lately she's, for a while, she's just been given a really bad rap in Ruby, and that scene just really fucking proves it. So, it was whatever, I guess. Um, did you ever see Black Dahlia, where uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Eckhart's character uh, tripped up that weird looking guy off the fountain and they both fucking died. That's what that reminded me of. I'm like, we got Aaron Eckhart who's this really 
nitty gritty boxing like detective in this series who's fucking untouchable and he, he seems how was able to trip himself up I guess for the sake of the plot just so you can mourn the character later and that's how I kind of felt what the situation was when Blake tripped herself up when she was fighting Adam she's just all skilled huntress yet she has no sense of balance to to <laughs> to, to keep herself from falling alongside Adam. And I guess, you know, his oars and all that, you know, probably broke their fall, you know, kept them from dying. But I just felt like it was just a really just, and it was a really inane follow up to their little showdown that they cut off for the next episode and whatnot. So it was ever. And when they pretty much smack to the ground and they're about to do their big show off, the episode cuts off. And this is pretty much where, this is where, uh, this is where the focus of more so the discussions of the video more so, uh, 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 lies on in, in this, uh, little review. Uh, okay, I know how everyone fucking, fucking shat all over their little fight in, uh, back in volume five. Yeah, back in volume five, where more or less, uh. Blake was a fucking matador to rig from jail and she pretty much uh 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 shit uh, uh uh bitched him out with a double X hand and that was all to it. I get it, that's pretty people pre been pretty much fucking shitting on that scene, but honestly, from my perspective, I kinda felt like I kinda felt like it was like, you know, a standoff like scene. I I didn't expect a big fight and whatnot. It was, I kind of like the fact that it was just more just big standoff scene in that particular, in that particular one attack, that one blow she did to Adam. It was more of a standoff scene. So yeah, I didn't really uh, 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 shit on it too much, but in their little showdown, which they just broadcast so much in this episode, I really do hope they just, they, they built it up in the next episode as like I don't know one from actually does severely get hurt or probably I'm probably sitting the bar really fucking high right now when I'm saying this Blake could kill uh, Adam or Ray Grimjack Blake could kill Adam or Blake hurts Adam I mean it's going to be better than you know just them just just repeating the same shit over again Rather, let's say Yang or Ruby fucking saves Blake before a certain death. Or even another thing, they just pull out another character who's working for the White Fang, who's a trusted henchman of Adam, who might be a eventual character in the series, would save Adam at the last minute. We never know. But I just hope it never leads up to this, this little stand that, they're, that they fucking put a cliffhanger on. I hope they really just... I hope it just doesn't end up, you know, with plot recycling more so, I would say. Like, to just show the same shit over and over again. From, we've seen in previous episodes, like, where everyone was going to get saved or it's going to be a one blow attack, a draw attack or something. I hope it doesn't resort to that. I kind of really hope that this fight in particular, and yes, again, I reiterate, I'm holding the bar really fucking high. That one that that Adam may get killed or severely beaten to the point where, you know, he's not even a main villain anymore or whatever. Or we never know. That that's more or less. I'm just saying. I hope in this little showdown we're gonna get something now. That's all I'm gonna have to say for it. Uh, 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 the 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 unfunny comedy aside in these two episodes and the pretty much just setting up new story arcs that probably might not even lead anywhere or might be a total disappointment aside uh those aside uh these episodes were they were adequate but they're somewhere they're somewhere up in uh there's some they're they're adequate but it's somewhat lifting up somewhere into into uh damn I almost forgot my shit <sighs> Exceptional, yeah, that's what it was, man. I, mm, man. 
<sighs> need to start snorting coke off bitches' asses. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, exceptionals. Uh, it, it's it's an adequate episode with more so the top Kravitz, more so also being hoist up into uh, exceptional. That's pretty much what I'm gonna have to say about both these episodes. Uh, I'll break more about all that, all of my terminology and shit, and and future episodes. Uh, I promise. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's out the way. Uh, yeah. Um, and like again, I'm probably holding the bar up, but I really do ho I hope the next episode really actually, uh, really actually do uh, uh promise my expectations and. I know, I hope it it pretty much uh, promises so many other uh, Ruby reviewers on YouTube or Ruby, Ruby Critics, period, or anyone looks at Ruby, period, as casual as I do or as devoted as anyone, ever, anyone else does. I just really do hope there's going to be something a little new to this, to this little uh, 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 stew pot of a, of a uh, volume that we're experiencing. I mean, actually, for the most part, because you already know by the end of all the, all all these uh, weekly episodes, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a, a a video on pretty much my overall taste and overall uh, thoughts on this season. You know, after you know, volume six is out. So yeah, you you already know. I swear, man, it should just be flying fast. I, I swear, man, it's almost feel like it's just fucking it's fucking. Went at uh, winter just fucking passed, and already it's almost in the spring. Have I already mentioned like, like how warm this winter is? I know I'm just talking right now, but you know that's 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 just pretty much how I'm feeling right now about you know the pacing and time of how I do all this shit, and how I make all these videos, and how I crank them, and you know all of the scripts I write for them and whatnot. And, and oral reports and, and how I revise all the episodes and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And what that is, I'm, I'm just shooting shit out the dark right now. I'm just rambling. I, I know I'm probably just uh, boring you out of tears, but that's just pretty much how I feel. That's how I feel right now. Um, and whatnot. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. And, uh, <laughs> Hold on. I have it. Is I've have it. I have it. I've I've I have an Instagram account up, so y'all can ch check that out. I kind of came to a realization, you know, me being a inspiring artist. You know, the only way for me to get my work out is, you know, if I put myself on obvious social media sites but you know i hate social media so you know i wasn't i was just going to stick to my guns you know youtube and a uh, deviant art but you know i had to fucking just swallow my pride and pull up my big boy pants and finally just get this shit out so yeah y'all can check that y'all can check my instagram account out y'all can get on my following list uh y'all can check out a few things that i upload on there it could be like some weekly art drawings i submit on there or some announcements and some new shit if, if you know if anyone sticks around on instagram you know y'all can just stick around and whatnot uh y'all can always check when i new make new content you know and you know i'll probably just will be there when i be there because again like i said i'm not big on social media so you know i'll get to it when i get to it uh i will respond to y'all when, when i get to it and whatnot so yeah more or less Y'all can catch me when I when I get on there. When I be on there, I'll be on there. And that's where y'all guys would see me. That's where y'all guys would catch me. And whatnot. Uh, I'll be posting the link of it in the description below. Or, you know, you can just go on Instagram and just go by Aka Channel, Tatsumaki, and I'll pop up. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it, man. Uh, like and subscribe to the video. Give notifications every time you want to know that my videos come across. Post some comments down in the section below to tell me how y'all felt about this video or how y'all felt about the episodes and whatnot and whatever. Y'all y'all already know the drill. I pretty much fucking say it in every video uh, and whatnot. So yeah, and like always, man, the other storm is watching y'all.